First, I want to acknowledge that here in Seattle, we're occupying the unceded land of the Duwamish tribe. As settlers, my house collective pays real rent, a form of colonial reparations to the Duwamish, as they're not federally recognized and don't receive support from the government. <laughs> I intended to start this talk by saying that the government isn't listening because that's what I thought people wanted to hear. If climate change was just an issue of communication breakdown between the needs of the people and the lawmakers, solutions would be so much simpler. But the government is listening. The problem is who they're listening to. My mother recounted to me a conversation she had with a friend about a lawsuit attempting to hold the US government accountable for the damage they're doing to the environment. Explaining why the lawsuit still hadn't gone to trial, my mother listed the various ways the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals continued to push back the trial dates. The judiciary is meant to seek justice for the people. For an issue that's getting increasingly worse over time, four years of pre-trial delays seems, well, unjust. It's starting to feel like the courts are more concerned about the defendants than the urgency of climate change. Legislation hasn't come near a solution in 50 plus years of climate change awareness. The presidential administration ignores us. And now the courts are stalling. My mother's friend looked stricken. She asked, who do I send letters to? Well, I encourage you to continue sending letters, but if we're going to address my generation's apocalyptic existential crisis, we're gonna need more than letters. It's not that the government isn't listening, it's who they're listening to. The voices of the wealthy elite have diluted US climate policy to the point of an absolute failure to address the issue. That's not a communication breakdown. That's a representational breakdown. That's why I'm here, to talk about representing ourselves. The lawsuit my mother was talking about is called Juliana versus US. Represented by the law nonprofit Our Children's Trust, 21 youth, including myself, filed a lawsuit against the US federal government in 2015, alleging that their support their staunch support of the fossil fuel industry was having measurable, damaging effects on the people of the United States. Disproportionately, climate change is hurting indigenous people, communities of color, low-income people, and youth. As a 22-year-old, second-generation Indian American, I am facing a future of unprecedented uncertainties. This lawsuit it gives my fellow plaintiffs and I a platform to have our voices heard. Instead of going through politicians, the Juliana plaintiffs are going through the courts. This isn't about politics. It's about our fundamental rights. In order to uphold our constitutional rights to life, liberty, and property, we need a stable climate system capable of supporting human life. This We'll take a science-based climate recovery plan with targets aimed at climate stabilization. If Juliana versus US wins, the courts will order the executive branch of the government to implement such a plan based and devised by scientists, economists, and other relevant experts. In the US, people often ask about climate change denial. How does one argue to address an issue that so many people don't believe exists? In politics, climate change might seem like a debate, but as our attorneys say, in the court of law, alternative facts are perjury. The Trump administration did not hesitate to agree with all of the climate science presented in our case they can't make a legal defense against scientific fact. 
The government's case fails to address our fundamental rights to a livable future. They're arguing semantics to distract from the core facts of our case. But climate change is not an issue of semantics. It's an issue of rights, representation, and lives. And clearly, it's up to the people to make that clear. It's time for mass grassroots mobilization. Representing ourselves through lawsuits as well as protesting is essential for social change. But in order to build these movements, we need to connect with each other. Music is what brought me into activism. Here's what happened. While studying environmental science in high school, I took a trip to rural Michigan to visit my family. There, I saw real-life examples of the things I was learning about in school, such as algae blooms from fertilizer runoff and the destruction of soil quality without crop rotation. They were happening in the backyard of my mother's childhood home. I wasn't satisfied just talking about these issues anymore, but I didn't know how to address them. So I turned my frustration into a song. I sang that song at my first environmentalist action camp, still in high school, organized by local activist groups and a law nonprofit to teach teens grassroots organizing skills, such as setting up blockades or organizing rallies. This was my first opportunity to hear stories from people on the front lines fighting environmental destruction. I realized these were the people I needed to connect with. I sang to share my own story. I wasn't just interested in environmentalism. I had personal and moral convictions of my own to bring to the fight. From the connections I made at that action camp, I joined my first environmentalist group. And now, five years later, here I am talking to all of you. Music and lawsuits may seem unrelated, but they have something in common. Both are platforms for people to share their stories. This is the point that I'm getting to. I don't want you to hear what I'm saying. I want you to feel what I'm feeling. You gotta choose. Trying to do. We want 
want a future, we thought you would too. Tied up in this system, that may be true, but we all make choices. Which side are you gonna choose? So, starting a band and playing around Seattle in college led to opening up a DIY music venue. For those who are unfamiliar, do-it-yourself venues are mainstay of the punk community. People open up warehouses, basements, backyards, or any space available to host intimate concerts. In our small house, the space is our kitchen. We started hosting shows as well as casual jams, and soon enough, newcomers found their way into our community. Some I got to know personally, while others I only knew through our shared love of music. Sometime in the early spring, our band heard about an upcoming direct action. This is when music and activism really came together. With our DIY as a platform, we decided to host a jam to recruit people to join us at the action the next morning. The party was great, but as we should have predicted, we overslept. Hurrying to the action, we arrived just before the police gave their first dispersal order. An officer walked up behind one of our new friends, someone who had started showing up just to play music and threatened arrest if they didn't move. The rest of us looked at each other. We didn't know if the new person had any experience with arrests. None of us had written down legal numbers on our arms to call if we were arrested, much less had we thought to fill out jail support forms. We didn't even know the new person's last name. All we had brought to the action was waffles and solidarity. Our new friend looked at us looked at the other activists, and quietly let the officer handcuff them and take them away. That's when it hit me. Through art, we were building community on a whole different level. Community where people didn't need to know that much about us to understand who we were. A new person had trusted us enough to risk the uncertainty of arrest knowing only the stories that we shared through our songs. If lawsuits tell the government the stories that politicians can't hear, art tells the world the stories that people can't just say. Music is how it gives me an outlet to process my anger as well as my love. Music is how I ask for help and through music, I hope to encourage others, to inspire others to take action. I encourage you to find a medium to share your story. Write a song, file a lawsuit, open up a DIY, or blockade an oil train. You've got options. Thank you. <laughs> 